Well, it's been a really long time since I've done a video on the 1971 Land and Sea. So maybe a little bit of an update and maybe future project plans and everything that's going to happen with this boat at some point in time. I mean, we can start at the front. Like the outside of the boat has not really had much done to it. Um, honestly, uh, I've kind of cleaned up the hole a little bit, did some minor painting and sanding and nah, it just needs a whole new gel coat. Honestly, like this little area here used to be black, sanded it down. Hi, Soka. Um, kind of spray painted it with a yellow off white that doesn't really match. So perfect. Yep. Needs a new gel coat. Um, <clears throat> what I did do. I pulled the front hatch off and replaced that window. Uh, obviously the door handle needs to be redone, done as well. Um, but replaced that window and repainted the door and did a really crappy job. So it needs to be redone. Um, those bolts probably need to be cut off too. Uh, really nothing else done. Uh, did put new tires on it. Um, we did try to take this out to a lo local lake uh, at some point last fall and all three of the four of these front two axle tires blew within five miles of the house. So yeah, new tires and uh, really expensive. These are an eight lug and they're a bigger tire and this is also not the same. So this is a tandem and that is just one leaf by itself not tandemed to the other so I don't know if I want to replace these tires or just run them till they pop figure it out whatever um, we'll go from there took the old water heater out this is just a piece of plywood with some white paint and some sealant uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this probably gonna fiberglass it in clean it up gel coat clean it up whatever these are newish. They're not pretty, but they're newish. Way better than the old plastic ones. Yes, my workspace is a complete disaster, so forgive me. Uh, this is not the original outdrive. <clears throat> um, the original outdrive is over there on the ground. And uh, it has no forward gear at all. So that was cool because that happened on a trip um, where we uh, were out camping and we had no forward gear. So I had to use a little tiny five horsepower kicker motor to get us all the way to the campsite and back and top speed was like four miles an hour because this is a 6,500 pound boat with all of our gear and stuff in it. This is new. So this is a 9.9 .9 Suzuki um, picked it up off of Craigslist for an excellent price. Um, and this is an electronic steering system that, uh, I haven't even finished fully wiring it up. So there's that coming out of the hole, um, down to goes to that little thingy majig right there. Uh, I just painted this. Oh, yesterday focus um oh, paint kind of stuck it closed but yeah so this goes in the hole wires come out connects to that little thingy sure which goes inside that thingy Connects to those two wires, connects to this thingy, and then you have a little toggle switch. I'll show you that actually. That controls <laughs> this motor, and these are very tight, and twists this back and forth electronically. Um, not the best setup in the world, but control lines. Fuel line, power stuff going through. Doesn't bind up on anything. It's great. Um, I did pull this off. Uh, wire wheeled it all down. Of course, there's debris on it for me drilling into the fiberglass. And then I put this cross brace here. So 
this used to flex oh about an inch and back and forth um this cross brace it is super solid so onto the outdrive so this is a volvo penta 280 um actually got this a couple years back and uh oh put it on so actually fairly fairly decent fiberglass work not the best in the world i'm no pro but um you can see my line fiberglass line here um had to completely fill in the entire transom uh recut a very specific hole to this out drive and rerun all of the hardware and stuff for this uh did that last spring um tons of work but a much better out drive than the old stringer that i could never even get the tilt trim to work properly um and of course it blew uh on our first major trip with the boat so uh, yes it's dirty we haven't even had a chance to use it this year because of the rain and the stuff so um tilt trim here apparently i left the batteries on last night i should not have uh works which is awesome um <clears throat> here's the back hatch we'll go over that here in a minute uh and of course the main reason i'm doing this video is because of this hatch here um but we can go back through a few other updates first oh let me clear some of this away so i'll fill my engine bay uh, so this is actually the third engine that this boat has had. In fact, let me get the light going here. Hold on. And I'm back. So, um, third engine. Uh, this is actually a 355, so board 30 over. Um, and it is actually the engine that uh, replaced the other engine that came with the other this outdrive the original engine in here uh started knocking just happened don't know why uh the second engine that i put in here uh ran fine for a few weeks um on blocks in my garage i'd run it change the oil uh check everything timing etc etc cool put it in here put it onto the out drive as soon as i put it on the out drive even the, the load of the bearings on the, in the out drive um blew it up blue rods so that's great this engine again is a 355 and it's actually a second gen block so had to change some things as far as like flywheels and um all the other things but for the most part uh runs really good um Wish I could start it for you on this video, but don't have any water in the outdrive setup, so I don't want to burn up my impeller. Um, as you can see, I've had to use some different styles of pipes and hoses and stuff to make all the water system work, but it is running and driving. The reason this valve cover, I mean not valve cover, air cleaners on here is it actually has a flash uh, suppressor thing inside. So um, backfires and stuff will be captured. So for all of those of you are like, Oh, you get that valve, that cleaner off there and put one with a good flash suppressor system in it. It's got one. That's why I put it on there for backfires. Um, in other news, uh, oh, here's that switch that runs that uh, directional control for the outdrive or outboard. Um, obviously, it's not hooked up right now, but pretty simple. And I've ordered a wireless uh, relay. So it comes with two remotes. And I'm going to wire it in to this. While also keeping this as an option. So I'll probably mount this somewhere. Like, you know, nearby. 
but then run wireless relays so that I can drive the boat from anywhere, uh, even not on the boat, which would be really weird. But um, you can remote control control the boat, so that'd be cool. Um, <clears throat> for the fuel system for that second outboard, uh, actually, that is a fuel tank selector. Go figure, it's not focusing. Fuel tank selector. Um, but what I did is I wired it in backwards. So fuel runs from the two tanks, that's the tank selector here, through the uh, fuel water separator, through there, and into either the big engine or the little engine. That's just a little lift pump, a little $12 lift pump. Uh, you flip a switch just inside of here. Oh. This little switch right here. And it primes my fuel line that runs to the little outboard and selects this output and shuts, oh my gosh, my phone will not, the other one off to the big engine. So I'm kind of limited to only going to run one engine at a time. Um, but to be able to just flip a switch, start the small one, do some trolling, um, versus having to climb down into the bilge and disconnect a fuel line and reconnect a fuel line, way cooler. So um, that's that. Turn this off real quick. Um, <clears throat> back to the transom. So this piece of plywood is actually me re-reinforcing this transom. So the original stringers, which is that out drive, use the engine as a um, as a brace. So the mounts for the engine connected to the bottom of the boat actually push the boat forward. The transom does not support any pressure. So to compensate for that, which um, this transom is actually not bad. It's pretty thick. Uh, I actually reinforced it with this extra piece of plywood. Everything is fiberglassed in completely, or resined in anyway. Um, and I don't know if you can see the 600 screws that I put in there. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, in, it's in there. Pretty good. Um, the steering system for the old outdrive actually was longitudinal. Went this way actually bolted somewhere up over here and pushed out. This one, I remounted it and it connects right here and goes back and forth. I'm probably in the future gonna take that connection and move it up to the next hole up to give me a little bit more throw. Um, mostly due to the fact that it's like a six spin lock to lock on the steering it might even be more than six um i know it's a lot so to kind of speed up the steering on the um hydraulic steering i'm gonna adjust it down even further uh and maybe like i said kick that up to the next notch up give me a little bit more throw and see if that helps with steering speed um what else uh the tilt trim right here actually works really really well um, I've got it wired up to again this switch right here for convenience and uh, it's a good time to go inside and oh I'll show you a few other things uh, yeah it's a project site right now so um, we did put carpet down uh, I went to our local remnant place and uh, every bit of carpet in the boat that is new cost me about $14, $15. So, yeah, pretty awesome. Uh, being that there was already a hole here, come on, focus. Uh, the tilt trim actually works from here. Uh, eventually, I would like to move this somewhere over here. Fill that hole in, etc., etc. But 
whatever. Um, all my blower controls, um, bilge pumps, anchor light, the forward bilge pump is right here. Uh, looks like they put that in afterwards, so hence why it's over here. Bilge light doesn't do anything, but eventually, maybe someday. Uh, I did put a nice big fish finder in here because it needed one. And to simplify things, that is the outboard control. Um, just put a little spacer piece right here, and there's a dead bug. Cool. Um, spacer piece, screwed it together, put it all in. This is electric start. Uh, wonderful. Um, cables all work. I did have to buy new cables because the original cables were like 9 feet long, and these ones are, I think, 30 four feet or 33 feet so yeah um we did put a new seat in here so the old seat was like a fold down seat because this apparently used to be like a possible bed for like somebody who was like three and a half feet long nobody in my family is going to sleep on a bed that's three and a half feet long so um took that out uh had a base and everything and just put a seat we already had these seats laying around so put it in here thinking about putting a 12 volt fridge freezer combo thing here just need to find one that's the right size and then secure it um, but i don't want it to be too permanent because there is electrical stuff underneath here um, so definitely important uh, for for all that stuff. Um, outboard control or outdrive controls, engine big engine controls right here, um, all still functional and good. Uh, I do need to fix the one up in the flybridge. Uh, needs a new clamp, which showed up in the mail yesterday. So cool. Um, <clears throat> obviously, we pulled out all the old cushions. Uh, and using my exceptionally good sewing skills, um, I actually re-sewed new cushions, which are not in here, because for the winter time, I don't know if you can see the mouse stuff down there. We didn't want to leave them in here to become mouse bedding. So, uh, but I have a new cushion for this. Um, this obviously flips over. I need to put the trim ring around it, the silver trim ring, to make it prettier. Um, there's my coffee from yesterday. So, all that's good. Uh, we haven't done anything with this. Literally, it's just been sitting. Uh, the reason that there's plumbing materials and stuff down here is... Oh, let me get some lights. Oh, speaking of lights, uh, put these in. Um, dimmable and three color. These were great. Um, they're pretty bright. Uh, not perfect, but they're pretty bright. So the two lines, cold, hot, hot, goes down, goes underneath, goes across, shoots over here to this area. And you probably can't see very well, but this line is new because in this little tiny hole, it's a piece of PVC. It runs all the way across underneath the shower, which is filthy, by the way, over to the other side. Uh, when I winterized the boat, we have never had hot water in this boat before. So um, it had some water in it, and that line blew literally in the middle underneath the shower, somewhere over here. So $33 and some fittings and stuff later, and I am getting ready to test that here sometime in the next day or two to find out if all my fittings sealed. Um, huge pain in the butt. I had to take the door off, had to clear all the stuff out. Uh, and um, yeah, so cool. So that works. Um, haven't done anything with the kitchen area, nothing, um, but 
I'll probably end this one on this. Oh yeah, light there, light there. Oh yeah, new windows. So not perfect. I had to use longer wood screws to make this work. I plan on getting some black cap head screws. And as you can see, there's actually a groove right here. That's not supposed to be here. So going to cut something, maybe a piece of wood, maybe a piece of plastic, fill in that gap and run some black cap head screws in here, clean this all up, make it look nice and pretty. Um, I also have another one of those windows for that window, which is in really bad shape. I don't know if you can literally see the bugs living in it, but it leaks when it rains. So this is a long video. Um, we got a ton of stuff going on with this boat, tons of projects, need to do labeling, um, finish the wiring. Uh, obviously everything needs to be cleaned up. I didn't even touch. Oof, almost fell off. On what we've done with the flybridge, not really much. We put seats in it. Nice seats. Nicer seats. They're U seats for my other boat. But anyway, um, the next thing I'm going to be doing is fixing this back hatch and uh, some small miscellaneous repairs here and there. Um, and hopefully, I'll get this thing out in the water here soon. It's raining like crazy and wet and cold probably like 41 degrees so no boating today but thanks for watching and uh i'll try to get more videos out